Hey guys, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil's Computer Lab. Today we're building a DOS retro gaming PC based around the Cyrix 6x86 processor. Some of the parts used for this computer were put up for a vote, so people got to decide which parts made it into the final system. In the end, the majority wanted a Socket 7 machine with the Cyrix 6x86 processor, a Tsang ET6000 graphics card and the Dreamblaster X2 prototype. I will talk about some of the components in more detail. We will look at the software, but also some DOS benchmarks and I've captured a few DOS games that will give us a good idea of what this machine can do. The motherboard we're using is the Asus SP97XV with the SIS5998 chipset. The processor we're using is the Cyrix 6x86L PR200 Plus. It is manufactured by IBM. This processor definitely needs active cooling, so we're mounting a nice Socket 7 cooler. This processor uses a very interesting clock speed. It uses a front side bus of 75 MHz with a multiplier of 2x. It needs a voltage of 2.8 volts and we are good to go. 32 MB of SD RAM is all we need. This is the graphics card that you guys voted on. It is the Tang ET6000. For sound, we're using an ESS audio drive with the 1868F chip. I had no issues with the sound card, so I can highly recommend it. And for the MIDI device, you guys voted on the Dreamblaster X2 prototype. So that's what we're going to use in this project. For storage, we're starting off with a floppy drive. This is the GoTek USB floppy emulator. A thousand floppy images on a single USB stick. If you don't have one of these, buy one. They're only $25 shipped. I've done a video review on it. I'll put a link down below in the description that explains how it works. But this is definitely a recommend to anyone. For the hard drive, I'm using a SD card to ID adapter. Compact flash cards are getting somewhat harder to find and start to cost a little bit more money, whereas SD cards can be purchased basically anywhere. And these SD adapters are actually really fast. So that's what we're going to use in this video. And finally, a standard optical drive, which is needed to install and play some games. The operating system we're using is MS-DOS 7.1. This one supports the FAT32 file system, so we can use the whole 16 gigabytes in one partition. If you're interested in learning how to install MS-DOS 7.1 and also how to get this boot menu that gives you all the memory options for all the games, I've prepared uh, a video a while ago. I'll put the link down below in the description. This is for everyone who is not that familiar with DOS or can't remember how to configure uh, memory options like configsys, autoexec, batch file and extended memory, expanded memory and so on. It's basically a DOS starter pack and all the files are provided. Just a quick overview in the BIOS. I usually load the setup defaults. These are actually the optimized defaults for slightly faster performance. And then the only thing I'm going to change have to do with the integrated resources. So I'm turning off all the serial ports and the parallel ports. Uh, the main reason is that just frees up a few interrupts which the sound card can use. If you're playing an older game and the computer runs too fast, you can go into the BIOS and turn off the internal and external caches. That will slow down the computer to roughly a 386DX and then games such as Wing Commander or Test Drive 3, which struggle on fast computers that simply run too, too quick, those games will become playable. To get the sound card going, I created a little batch file and what that does is initialize the card, but it also configures the mixer so we can hear the general MIDI wavetable board as well as the CD audio music. Let's have a quick look at some benchmarks. If you want to run these benchmarks on your own DOS retro gaming PC, I put together a benchmark pack with a easy to use menu system. I put the link down below in the description. The first benchmark is 3D Bench and this is version 1.0C. We're getting almost 200 frames per second. As a comparison, I've included the benchmark result of the 486DX266 Sleeper PC video that I did recently. I'll put the link down below in the description. So this just gives you something to compare the machine to. In Chris's 3D Bench, we're getting a score of 116.1 FPS. The PC player benchmark at the VGA resolution, we're getting 44.9 FPS. 
in Wolfenstein 3D. This machine is really fast. We're getting 171.8 FPS. Doom is also extremely playable with a frame rate of 79 FPS. Now, remember, Doom has a capped frame rate of 35 FPS, so this is plenty. And the last benchmark is Quake. Now, Quake does use the floating point unit, which is the main weakness of the Sarix. We're only getting 27 FPS. In order to play older games that are speed sensitive and run too fast on many machines, like Wing Commander or Test Drive 3, you can just go into the BIOS and disable both caches. And I've also run two benchmarks, so with the caches disabled, we're getting a score of 14.9 FPS in 3D Bench and in Wolfenstein 3D, a FPS score of 28.9. So this is roughly on a level of a fast 386 around 40 megahertz. A little bit too fast for Wing Commander. In busy scenes, the speed is fine, but if you're down to the last enemy, trying to hunt that one down becomes almost impossible because the game just runs too fast. And now it's time to look at some proper games. I hooked up the DOS Retro Gaming PC to my VGA capture box to record the VGA output as well as the output from the sound card. So the first game we're going to look at are Doom and Doom 2. Well, these two games run really great. Let's have a look at Descent. Descent also runs really smooth. Let's have a look at Tomb Raider. So that was Tomb Raider in VGA resolution. Let's try Tomb Raider in 640 by 480. So we can see at the 640 by 480 resolution, Tomb Raider is struggling a little bit. It's still fairly playable, but it's not optimal. Let's try Wing Commander 3. With the two Wing Commander games, the frame rate is fine in space, but when you get close to the larger ships, you definitely see that the processor struggles a little bit. Another high resolution game is Pinball Illusions running at 640 by 480.
This game also runs really well on this machine. Let's check out the Need for Speed. The Need for Speed also runs perfectly on this machine. Let's check out System Shock at 640x480 resolution. So System Shock struggles a little bit at 640x480. It is once again definitely playable, but it is not optimal. Okay, let's summarize how this machine does for DOS games. For VGA, it is very good. Most of the games run very smooth and well. Quake is a little bit of an exception, and that's because the Sarix doesn't have a very strong floating point unit. Once we increase the resolution to 640x480, the outcome is a little bit different. Some of the games work fine, like Pinball Illusions, for example, and also Need for Speed, but Tomb Raider, the Wing Commander games, and also System Shock, you can definitely tell that the machine struggles a little bit. However, you can still argue that it's fairly playable. So all in all, this is a pretty cool machine, and you will find a ton of games that work just fine. Over the next few videos, you can expect me to cover a few of the components that did not win the vote, that are, however, still quite popular and definitely of interest. And it will give us a bit of a, a wider picture of how the Sarix compares with some of the other processors and how the graphics cards compare against each other. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the like or the dislike button, depending on how you feel about this video. And I'll see you soon in another video.